This is the food that harms the liver most. In this video, I'll reveal the liver's number one enemy. What do I mean by harming the liver? I'm talking about food that can cause fatty liver disease. It's when the liver starts accumulating fat. So what's the problem with this fat? This fat can damage and inflame the liver, leading to steatohepatitis. This inflammation can cause scarring, fibrosis, and even cirrhosis where the liver stops working properly. And if that's not enough, it also raises liver cancer risk. This is incredibly important, folks. I'll list seven food types you need to be very careful with. Number one is the most harmful, and I'll explain it in detail so you can better protect your liver's health. If you follow these tips on what to avoid, you'll be doing wonders for your liver health. This applies not just to those preventing liver fat, but also to those who already have it. We know that a billion people worldwide, some estimates even higher, imagine that, a billion. See how common this condition is? They're affected by fatty liver, so you need to be very careful. So this video is relevant for everyone. And what are these seven foods? I'll start from the bottom explaining each, but remember, number one, often hides in foods you eat unknowingly. So what's number seven? Ultra-processed foods, boxed burgers, frozen pizza, store-bought frozen lasagna, instant noodles. Why? These foods have fewer nutrients than a homemade burger, for example. So I'm not against burgers, but avoid ready-made ultra-processed ones. If you want a burger, make it at home. It's healthier and even cheaper. So it's much better. On this channel, I always emphasize common sense and balance. Homemade burgers can be an option, even pizza sometimes. These won't make you accumulate liver fat or get sick, but routine consumption of ultra-processed foods will. Studies show habitual eaters have more liver fat, so it's best to avoid. Also, ready-made foods like instant noodles have 70% of daily sodium. Only 30% is left for all other foods. What's the chance of consuming excess sodium? And what's the problem with excess sodium? Also, sodium retains water and fluid. If you consistently consume excess sodium, you may experience increased blood pressure. Why did I mention your routine? I like to be flexible, as people often say. If I eat more sodium, my body can handle it. True, healthy kidneys can process occasional high-sodium meals like instant noodles, but daily consumption can harm your health and increase stroke risk. People who eat high-sodium foods daily have a higher stroke risk. Studies have confirmed this. The risk can increase by up to 40%. That's a significant increase. It's worth avoiding ultra-processed, ready-made boxed foods. That's number seven. Number six is foods with added sugar, like the sugar you put in coffee, drinks, and other beverages. You eat cakes with sugar and add sugar to various foods. This type of carb is worth noting because you're actively adding it. It's best to avoid it. Excess can also go to your liver and accumulate as fat. Diets high in simple carbs, sugars, and added sugar, for example. I'm not just talking about refined sugar, but all types, demerara, crystal, powdered, all have similar effects. You'll spike your blood sugar if your metabolism isn't good. Insulin won't control it well, so metabolically, you should avoid this situation. For those with healthy metabolism, it's like instant noodles. Once won't hurt, but regular consumption can damage your liver. So avoid adding sugar to everything. If you have sugar at home, try to avoid it. Using natural sweeteners is a better choice. If you must sweeten coffee, use natural options like stevia, xylitol, or erythritol. I know you like this format, so I'll provide some arguments here. Many videos claim sweeteners may increase diabetes risk, weight gain, and disrupt gut health. These are all low evidence studies that don't prove anything. Large, serious studies with statistical power show these sweeteners are safe. So there's no need to fear sweeteners. It's better to use sweetener than sugar, for example. Don't buy into internet influencers claims without scientific backing. You can use sweeteners safely. They won't harm your gut or cause issues. Studies back this up. So avoid simple sugars. Now some say all carbs turn to sugar. Like bread, for example, does convert to sugar when eaten, but we can't cut everything out. I've said before, I'm not anti-bread. If you want carbs, pair them with protein. Bread and eggs, great choice. Won't hurt your liver unless you eat 10 servings. That's not the point though. Everything in moderation. Or try bread with cheese. Why?
If you add fats and proteins, you'll reduce absorption and glycemic index. This won't spike your blood sugar as much and is better metabolically. It can still be very nutritious, got it? So focus on added sugars or you might restrict too much and become malnourished. That's not the goal here. Number five, which I suggest avoiding entirely is alcoholic drinks. Why is that? Alcoholic beverages are processed by the liver. If you have liver issues or are managing liver fat, it's best to avoid it completely. As a doctor and endocrinologist, I advise against drinking any alcohol. Some studies show that for people without health issues, listen carefully. They can have one alcoholic drink like wine without harm. And indeed, many studies confirm this. However, when it comes to fatty liver, I strongly advise against it. I also need to share another piece of evidence with you, okay? If you hear this from another doctor or video, there's evidence for this too. But this only applies to those with no liver problems. Number four, another food to avoid. Processed meats like copper, salami, prosciutto, turkey breast, ham. These processed meats contain preservatives like nitrates and nitrites. They're not nutritionally necessary. It's a big concern I've mentioned before. I always emphasize common sense. Studies show diets high in processed meats increase the risk of colorectal cancer due to these preservatives. They also raise cardiovascular risk and liver fat, so it's best to avoid them. I'm not talking about red meat, chicken, or fish, okay? If you enjoy those, that's fine. I mean, processed meats, sausages, and cold cuts. These are worth avoiding completely. But how much can actually harm me? Studies show this link I mentioned with weekly consumption of three or more times. So it's not just a one-time thing. If you enjoy some sausage once a year, that's fine. We must consider this as one-time consumption won't cause all that damage, but be careful with regular intake. Three or more times weekly, studies show this link as its frequent consumption. For sausage lovers, this amount is easily reached. In practice, I see many patients consume much more, sometimes six or seven meals a week, which is very common. You might eat salami, ham, other processed meats. It's easy to hit three times weekly. It's worth avoiding completely. Plus, it's high in sodium, as I explained earlier, so it's worth limiting. I know these foods taste good. Many love my seasoned salami, but for your liver, be aware it can harm. Avoid when possible. Number three, pay attention to fried foods. Fried chicken, french fries, you know the drill, right? I won't belabor the point. Why? When you eat fried food, you consume excess saturated fats. Studies link high saturated fat diets to increased heart risk and higher bad cholesterol. Don't I need some fat? Yes, but I'm talking about excess here. People who eat lots of fried food easily overdo it. So opt for baked foods instead, for example. If you like chicken, try roasting it. If you like potatoes, bake them instead. There are many ways to cook. You won't miss frying. For fried food lovers, I know it's tough to adapt, as it's a habit, right? Sometimes people have eaten this way their whole life, so change is hard. But change slowly, and you'll see benefits for your liver, health, cholesterol, and heart. There are many advantages. When I mention frying, people ask, what about eggs? Can I eat them? The answer is yes. Eggs have fat, but it's the good kind. They have some saturated fat, but you need a bit. Plus, yolks have B vitamins, choline, and nutrients for eyes, brain, and vision, with protein in the whites. So eggs are fine to eat, but not all fats are equal, okay? The same applies to what I said about meats. You can eat red meat with some fat, but prefer leaner cuts and avoid fried foods. Secondly, avoid cooking with lots of fat, oil, lard, coconut oil, or soybean oil. Be mindful of the amount you use. Why? Too much fat in food is a problem. Today at a restaurant, my pasta was swimming in oil. Be careful adding fats like butter or margarine. It increases calories and fat content unnecessarily. Many foods already have fats and nutrients, so get used to using less. I strongly recommend cooking with little to no fat. Personally, I don't use any fat when preparing food. Use a nonstick pan or cook in ways that require less fat. This applies to fried foods too. It might be tough if you're used to lots of lard. I advise against using lard. Many claim lard is healthy, but it's mostly saturated fat. Be cautious with fats. Even healthy oils can harm your liver in excess. So be very mindful of excess fat consumption, okay? It's not forbidden. Just be careful. When I really need to use fat, I use a bit of olive oil. You know that olive oil spray? I give it a spritz, usually about 1 to 3 mls. It won't add excess calories and can benefit your health, okay? 
So be careful with the total calories and fat you're using. What fat do you use? Are you thinking about stopping or not? Write it here in the comments. Also mention which part of the world you're from. Let's talk about number one, the big villain for liver fat. It's fructose syrup, corn syrup, or glucose fructose. Pay special attention to this. If it's on the label, avoid it. Why? This food, if we can call it that, should be avoided. I'll give you a list. Studies show foods with this substance can harm your liver. Often fructose syrup causes confusion. It's not the fructose in fruits that's harmful. You can eat fruits freely. Many fruits are very good for you, which I can discuss later. What's harmful is the industrialized fructose syrup. Where can you find this corn syrup or fructose syrup? Some of the names I mentioned earlier. Pay attention to this list to avoid these items. In sweetened drinks like box juice, soda, chocolate milk, and even iced tea or sweetened iced mate, you might find fructose syrup. Also avoid filled cookies, regular cookies, and wafers. These ready-made packaged snacks you buy at the store should be avoided too. Check labels on sauces, dressings, and condiments for hidden ingredients. Even honey mustard, salad dressings, ketchups, and mayo can contain them. If you see an unfamiliar acronym, Look it up online to check if it's one of the substances I mentioned earlier, okay? It's crucial to be cautious and avoid these. Where else can I find corn syrup or fructose syrup? Processed ice creams and some popsicles contain fructose syrup. Be careful with other foods too, packaged breads, snack cakes, and ready-made loaves. Not the fresh bread from the bakery. I've already cleared that one in the video. As you've seen, it can be healthy. But be cautious with those packaged breads on the shelves. Avoid ready-made puddings, mousses, and chocolate desserts in packets. They may have corn or fructose syrup. Did you know? Many sugary breakfast cereals contain corn syrup or fructose syrup, so be careful, as this can harm your liver if it's part of your routine. Sweets and lollipops? You know to avoid those. But what makes it even worse? Eating these foods with excess calories. This combo leads to fatty liver. To get a fatty liver, Eat too much, move too little, and make poor food choices. Think ready-made puddings, sugary cereals, or those healthy cereal bars. Small amounts, your liver can handle it, but excess calories, fatty foods, and high-calorie meals daily, plus corn syrup and fructose, that's the fatty liver formula. So by avoiding and controlling these foods, moderating portions, and choosing healthier options, you can manage and even reverse liver fat, preventing accumulation in this vital organ. No miracle supplements. You know I don't sell any supplements or medications. I've said this many times before. Now I have a video suggestion for you. It's about signs of a weak heart. When your heart isn't working well, it's called heart failure. Can you recognize the signs and symptoms? It's crucial to know this to care for your health and seek help early. Click here to watch my video about weak hearts, learn the signs and how to prevent heart weakness. I cover that too. Take care. See you next time.